Greetings, all. First, there is a dual-band feed design update from Paul Wade, W1GHZ. He reports that what he's come up with looks like it would work pretty well for an offset dish like the DSS dishes, with good efficiency at both bands. Simulation says the isolation from 5.8 gigahertz to the 10 gigahertz port is about 80 dB, 80 dB. Performance plots are shown here. He is going to work up a sketch for 3D printing. He recommends a filter, like the ones in his QEX articles, that can easily provide 6D, 6, 0 dB of second harmonic rejection. He believes that the second harmonic from any decent amplifier will be 20 or 30 dB down, so that's at least 80 dB down between the amplifier's capabilities and the filter. Unless the signal is actually in band, a signal that far down won't hurt. He added that as for push-pull amplifiers, we may be underestimating the difficulty of keeping them balanced at microwave. Using a push-pull amplifier as part of the dual-band solution may not provide the performance we need. Second, there's plenty of action in the transmitter RF chain with results from measurements at the VHF Super Conference. Thank you to Eric Nichols, Mike W4UOO, John Petrich W7FU, John Toscano, Mike Seguin, and several others for stepping up to volunteer on this part of the project. We'll be increasing our use of Google Forms to coordinate parts of the project, maintaining a list of all the forms on GitHub, and possibly setting up a web page to increase project findability. Third, the San Diego Microwave Group demonstrated the results of a project that Drew and Kerry Banke have been working on these last couple of weeks. It is the combination of a $4.24 Arduino processor board with a $29 PLL board to provide a programmable fixed local oscillator in the 137 to 4400 megahertz range. Once programmed, these, this set of off-the-shelf boards comes up on frequency at power-up. The programming software utilizes the analog device's ADF4350 evaluation software to calculate the PLL data. This is then entered by hand into an Arduino programmer sketch that was written by Drew. This was then uploaded to the Arduino, and that's it. Kerry reports that the software is easy to use and free. Check out this video report of the hardware verification from Paul, KB5MU. In Naos, that's probably, in, in, in oh. house, that's probably oh. Uno. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, it basically takes the, the $5 Uno board, that's a $29 PLL board from China, and I just put a, a little, uh, it's a little interface board just to hold, glue things together, and there's five, five wires that tie the two together directly, and that's it. So, yeah, very simple, and it, uh, once, once you kind of understand how to operate the software, then it's, it's slick, you know. So I've just been playing with it. I haven't even got had a chance to get a lot of a lot of experience with it yet. But, but uh, I've programmed up a few different things. I mean, what is nice about the analog devices software is that uh, this particular board comes with a, a, a little onboard 10 megahertz crystal. Okay, this one happens to come with a 25 meg crystal. Okay, um, over here you just select. Uh, in the reference frequency, you just, you know, well, what's on your board? You, you plug in the number you have, oh. and it, it, it takes care of all the calculations. So it's, it's really nice. So that, that, that uh, analog device software is a really nice match for, for what we're doing. You can use the data sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you look at those, those six, you look at those six, six registers with all that stuff. I mean, my and The God. ten pages to explain them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 in, 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 in order to. So this is this, this software uh, that's available off the web um, just allows you to run the Arduino software. So basically we take the, there's six, six re hex register values that you end up having to put into the six, the, these six locations in this uh, program that, in the Arduino program. Uh, and then you tell it to, you tell it to compile and then 
upload it. And well, it. Yeah. well, that's one button to do compile and upload with Arduino. Yeah, or you could, yeah. <laughs> so you just hardwire a particular frequency yeah. in the Arduino program right now. So in the program you, reset. Do you have any plans like, to make it where you can dial it well, in? Well, it's whatever Kerry. I mean, Kerry, Kerry it, knows it, he can do anything you can dream of. I mean, you can add an IR receiver yeah. module to the Arduino. You can use your TV remote control, right? No, it, just bump it, it up it, and down. Yeah, at, this, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at, this, at this one, I just wanted to see what we could do fixed, with yeah. these little $29 this is the Board, first yeah. program to do is evaluation of the hardware. Yeah, right? just so. to just to see those twenty nine dollar boards. Do they behave like they should? And yeah. yeah. How pure they, is it? Sine wave it puts out? No, no, it's it's square wave and uh, let's see at twenty three oh four. I looked at the oh square wave. Yeah, I looked at the nice. second harmonic is about twelve dB down. Third harmonic. <laughs> Oh, I mean, it, I mean, it, you can you can see ten gigs on there if you want. Wow! So anyway, so, so it's uh, perfect so yeah, you can, for you filtering can, out the. Oh, the, oh, the good thing. Actually, good to do that. oh, it's a good comb generator. Huh? Bandwidth button. Uh, Just trying to see what the phase noise is. Phase noise looks like, yeah. But it's, I mean, it's it's very usable. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I've looked at it, I've looked at the harmonic up at ten gigs, and 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 it looks good and it sounds fine too. I mean, it's it's better than the Qualcomm synthesizers that we that we've been running for all these years. So. Wow, really? Yeah, yeah. it's as, as good or better. So does it have a place to inject a external? Pen it does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what's nice. It has a these boards come with a, a very lousy onboard oscillator. This has a little twenty five meg oscillator on board. Like this thing is off like thirty kilohertz at twenty three oh four. Oh. Okay, it's low. I mean, it should it should be dead, uh, dead center. But it, uh, um, was that better than the gun flexor gear or worse? <laughs> well, well, gun flexor wouldn't well, be on the screen. Least, <laughs> at least it stays put. You know, I mean, that's not all right. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, but yeah, with the you you disconnect the one little pad over there, and then you run external ten mm. megs or whatever you got. Ah. Yeah, and that's the nice thing about it is this with, with the software, you, you tell it what what, what reference got, what know, reference you have. Yeah. So that's that's, cool. that's the thing I I think is neat. I mean, even though it, like I said, at this point, I've got to set up for a single, you know, a single frequency. But I think that's a, a big step in the right direction for receivers and stuff that we do. You Just know, the, transceivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. utility yeah. oscillator. What's yeah. its uh, resolution up at the high end? You know, like one kilohertz. Yeah. Even up at the gigahertz range. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, up at four point four gigahertz is still a still a one one kilohertz steps that they provide. I mean, audio it's band off of 250. Here. So it's like at, at 250 hertz, it's uh, 60 dBc in the phase noise. Yeah. Yeah. That would be fine. You know? Could that be the noise from the crystal cell? Oh, and, and yet there's a number of things. I mean, one <laughs> is this thing's running off a USB supply. I, uh, that, <laughs> that whole thing AM is, is <laughs> sensitive to power supply noise, so it yeah. really needs to have a clean supply running it. It's a three seven. And then, and then the uh, but right now, of course, we're just shoving in five off of the USB, uh, and then the um, PLL board has a five to three volt regulator on it, so because everything on there runs on three. So the one thing that you have to do though is you have to get a a three volt compatible version of the Arduino because the the earlier ones are all 5 volt and the logic level going to this guy to, to be a direct connection needs to be 3 volt uh, the 3 volt now this this